of a disc, I believe, rolling down this incline. And if you guys want to find it on Canvas, you can, so you don't have to write it as we go. It might be useful for me, too, after I start to screw this up. We measured X down, I believe that is correct. So this is the angle alpha. So the kinetic energy was one half M X dot squared plus, and this should be in your notes from last time, plus one half I theta dot squared motion of the center mass rotational kinetic energy. So this is, in other words, you know what? Let's use a, a sort of common parlance here. This is translational, KE, and this is rotational, KE. Everybody agree with that? And I believe the potential, V of X, was equal to MG sine alpha. And unless I made a mistake, when X is equal to zero, you are at the... Uh, when x is equal to L, you're at the bottom. And when x is equal to zero, you're at the top. So this came out to be, because I've measured x downward from here, right? So this is L minus x. So after you go all the way down, you get zero. And when x is equal to zero, you are MGL sine, which is this height right here, correct? So we have a constraint, and the constraint is F is equal to, and this is the rolling without slipping constraint, x minus, we'll take the, I think I used a for the diameter of the disk, x minus a theta is equal to zero. All right. So there's no phi in this problem because it's an extremely thin, razor sharp disk on an extremely thin, Razor sharp inclined plane. Sweet Jesus. I tell you as an instructor, honestly, you don't know how much I appreciate that you guys did that. It, it takes a real level of engagement to be able to say, hey, 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 no, 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 no. put that fi in. But now I'm telling you, this is paper thin. So we'll find for the X coordinate. Do it on your own real quick. Give you 40 seconds, but I'm not going to pause. I'll do it with you. The equation of motion for the X coordinate. And here's what I got. I got MX double dot. And of course, I'm getting, I'm, I've been caught getting minus signs wrong so often with this. I actually wrote down TL is T minus V, which is all T. And then over here I have, when I put the minus sign in front, that changes L minus X into X minus L. Then when I take the derivative of that, I get MGL sine alpha. So far, so good? Oh, there's no L. It's just MG sine alpha. Okay. So right now I have, cleaning that up, MX double dot minus MG sine alpha plus F times lambda times partial. I got over here. I got these backwards, don't I? Look, look at the screen before I erase it. Look at my shame. Over here, this is lambda partial F partial X. So that's zero, correct? So the theta one and the theta coordinate is I theta double dot. That one's easy. I don't think we have anything else, do we?
See anything else? Minus partial well, partial theta, nothing. That is plus. And then I will have lambda times partial F, partial theta. And this is going to give me I theta double dot plus lambda. I believe that comes out to be minus A. Am I right about that? Is equal to zero. Now we can use our constraint, can we not? Our constraint is then M X double dot. You want to use X or you want to use theta? Let's go, let's go ahead and X because I wrote it down first. Can you use either one? Absolutely, yes. Because you have a constraint that relates the true the two. Mx double dot minus m g sine alpha plus lambda equals zero. And then I have I theta double dot is x double dot over a is e plus lambda is equal to zero. So I can immediately get this is one and this is two. Still B minus. Oh, it's a minus, a. isn't it? Minus here? Mi minus A. Yeah. yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, yep, yep, yep. Right here. Any remember uh, Land Before Time with Ducky and, here? yeah. And that, what was the name of that one that was? Yep, 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 yep. That was Ducky? Yeah, he was annoying as all get out. Who was your was it? She, uh, who is who is your favorite Land Before Time dinosaur? Spike. Dudes identify with Spike. You know he's kind of muddling through life, bumping into things, hoping for the best. You know. Yeah, my daughter likes Sarah. Yeah, yeah. She had a ill. She was she was ill tempered. You know. So this is Lambda. You're telling me this is Lambda A here, correct? Yes. Yep. Everything else good? Because the constraint back here, I take partial F, partial theta, and I get minus A, a constant right there. All right, take a minute and work this out. Let's find, let's go ahead and get X double dot first. What did we have, a disk? Did we say it was a disk? What? I'm just checking. <laughs> so it's so the moment of inertia, what's the moment of inertia disk? Anyone? One half I R squared, one half M A squared in this case, right? One half I, one half A. So this is M A squared over two. And I'll let you work this out. I'll do it with you. Basically, I'm you're doing it with me because I'm almost certain to get it wrong. Let's see. This is then. One half M So I'll wait for you to make sure I'm okay on this. I canceled out A from the uh, equation two, because I have an A squared divided by A. Give me an A, so I cancel that out. I believe we're good to go. Okay, let me ask you, just, just are, are we interested more in the acceleration or are we interested more in the constraint force just as a class right now? Or do you want to do them both? Let's get the constraint force, right? <laughs> yeah, let's get the constraint force. So if I get the constraint force, I can multiply the bottom one by two and subtract, correct? So one minus two, equation two, will give me that minus that, minus m g sine alpha, minus of a, so that's lambda, do it this way, one minus two lambda will be plus, unless I made a mistake here, three lambda, and that will be equal to zero. So lambda will be equal to mg. I multiplied this bottom one by two, correct? mg sine alpha over three. 
Okay. And that is the force that keeps this thing rolling. And what what is the what is the origin of that force, by the way? Friction. Friction. Excellent. It's a frictional force. Excellent. That's what keeps it rolling. You can do this. Now, let's go back. Now that we have that. We can find the acceleration as well. Let's get it. X double dot will be equal to 2 lambda over m. Am I right about that? So this will be equal to 2. I can't find, I can't bring it in myself to kill this bug. He's not, he's just minding his own business. So that is going to be. First, first thing right here, and he brings a plane. Huh? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And before you know it, before you know it, I'm being consumed. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's 2G sine alpha. But he won't, he's getting on my nerves though. 2G sine alpha over three. Okay. I think, let's see, I multiply by two, divide by M, has units of acceleration. Everything looks good, right? You have a job to do. Let's verify this. This is just a sort of exercise to make sure we can do this kind of problem when it appears on a qualifier. Do this problem with Newton's laws. Disc rolls, and you do a conservation of energy too, right? Is it really? Yeah. Well, we just did. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's because I haven't done this. I think it's because you haven't done it in a while. Yeah. It's definitely longer. Possibly. Do it, 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 it's going to be a line, 1.5 to 2.5 limes longer. Yeah. About, right? But it's not prohibitively, okay? I'm going to give everybody about three minutes to get there. Not two minutes. I, don't, I, I can't stay still three minutes. I'll give everybody two minutes to get this started. So we have Mg down. We have the normal force perpendicular to the surface in which the disc is contact contacting. We have a frictional force. Probably should put it where it actually lands on this thing, which is here, back, correct? So we have F equal MA gives me MX double dot is equal to MG sine, right here, pop, 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 MG sine alpha down, correct? Minus the frictional force F. So that's F equal MA because down is positive. And then let's see what else we have. We have I theta double dot is equal to A times F, correct? Because that's the torque, net torque. And then from there you can get it. But those are the equation. And then I'll let you solve that on your own. And it will all come out. All right. So notice you don't, and you, at no point here, you could do N minus Mg cosine alpha is equal to zero. And you could have then said F is equal to mu K N. And you could have solved it that way as well. But since we're just asking for the acceleration and the constraint force F, you can get it as two equations and two unknowns, yeah? It's not slipping. No, that you no, it's mukinetic. It's moving. Pretty sure it's moving. It's not slipping. It's rolling. Yeah, let me think about that. Yeah, you might be right. It's mu static. I gotta check that. You know what? I don't remember. I just taught general physics one, and I don't remember. I know if it's a tire. It's a good question. I know if it's a tire and you're going around like this, it's definitely mu static because there's no motion relative, right? Yeah. 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 yeah it's not. Yeah, it's instantaneously at rest. I got to think about that because it is actually having to. That's a good question. I don't remember at the top of my head. We can reason that out. Instant, yet yeah, because it, it's it's a more subtle thing. It would be it would be K if it like was. If yes. Was yeah. 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 I think you're right. You're probably right. Okay. It might be. Well, I'm going to check that though, and see if it's mu static or mu kinetic. I do agree with you. It's a controversial issue now. <laughs> we have to address this controversy at a later time. All right. And that's all there. I could times of the essence and some things I have to do cut out. 
All right. So the next chapter will start. I'm going to pause, actually stop recording here.